Our next story is about Germany. Its politicians are not safe. Let me explain how. Six days ago, a politician in Nordon was attacked with eggs and then beaten up by a 29-year-old man. Five days ago, German politician Matthias Eck was ruthlessly beaten up while hanging campaign posters in Dresden. The attackers left him with fractures to his cheekbone and eye socket. His injuries were so bad, he needed surgery. The same day, a member of the Greens party was shoved and spat at while putting up campaign posters, two of which were torn down. And prior to the attack, the two accused, who have now been arrested, were heard shouting Hitler salutes. Two days ago, a senator from Berlin was hit over the head with a bag containing hard material. Now, these are incidents from just the past one week, but since the year started, there have been 22 such incidents. 22 incidents in the last four and a half months. Compare that to the 27 incidents of attacks against politicians in all of 2023. So Germany is clearly seeing a sharp rise in political violence. Politicians are being beaten up while campaigning for elections. But why is this happening? What's behind the spate of violent incidents? The answer to that question is rather complicated. Many blame the far-right alternative for Germany party, AFD. They say that the emboldened far-right has corrupted the political discourse with their inflammatory rhetoric. In the case of Matthias Eck, the pol police say that the attackers appear to have been influenced by right-wing extremist ideology. But members of the AFD party have also become victims of political violence. Last year alone, there were 86 incidents of violent attacks against politicians from AFD. Clearly, extreme hate and violence is being experienced across the political spectrum. Increasingly, politicians are not only being attacked, they are seeing pile of dung being dumped at the party offices, eggs being thrown at the windows, mailboxes being blown open. The attacks come at a time when politicians are busy campaigning for the European Parliament elections as well as the district council elections. The figures in recent years are obvious. We're talking about almost 3,000 attacks last year alone. And there will probably be even more this year. And then somehow, it is just accepted that a party office was attacked, that someone was insulted, but nothing really bad happened until something extreme happens. Naturally, the German politicians are up in arms. They have expressed their concern about the rise in politically motivated violence. They are demanding stricter laws to safeguard themselves and their election, their election workers from such violence. In fact, such is the level of anxiety that some politicians have even compared it to the political violence the country faced during the early 20th century with the rise of the Nazis. My party is now asking if people want to help put up posters and we've heard that an SPD member was beaten up in Dresden at night when putting up posters. Now party members either say that they only put up posters in pairs, which I can absolutely understand because then you're simply safer or they say they're afraid to go out and put up posters. And as concerns grew over the rise in violence, the German Chancellor Olaf Scholz issued a strong condemnation. Listen in. He is now asking if people want to help put up posters. And we've heard that an SPD member was beaten up in Dresden at night when putting up posters. Now party members either say that they only put up posters in pairs. But the question is, what's really driving this level of hate? Political experts blame it on anger among the voters. The attackers are obviously extremely dissatisfied and angry about politics. Politics simply something that does not correspond to their own ideas and wishes. On a deeper level, however, this has much more to do with the fact that people are more willing to use violence to assert their interests. And what interests are these? These are interests that are fed by economic and cultural insecurities. And that has simply come to a head over the years. But can anger be the only reason behind the violence or is there more to this than what meets the eye? 
After all, insults, threats, attempts at intimidation have long been a part of campaigning. So what's really changed now? You see, across Europe, people are losing faith in their governments. Political experts agree that misplaced priorities of the politicians, xenophobic rhetoric, inward-looking policies have led to an erosion of the open and progressive idea of Europe. On top of that, there is a cost of living crisis in Europe. It's a perfect mixture for economic and cultural insecurities to rise. Experts say that this has made people more willing to use violence. However, does anger towards politicians justify the use of violence? The answer is no. You see, violence is highly problematic for a liberal democracy. It can never be justified in any case. While politicians should refrain from resorting to extremism in their language, voters and the electorate can also make a difference with their actions. For instance, they can get involved in the local community and take a stand against violent acts. Politicians who have been attacked, such as Matthias Eck, will recover from the injuries, but it is the strength of democracy that will be left scarred. After all, violence is the antithesis of democracy. To stay up to speed with the latest news, download the Weon app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.